<laughs> okay, that's probably very loud. All right, it should be fixed now. Can you hear me now? <laughs> I know exactly what the problem is. Can you hear me at this point? <laughs> All right. Basically, I uh, sort of I have a, I have multiple mics uh, that I use for different purposes. So uh, yeah, I just had to turn the volume down too because I think I was really yelling in there. All right, great. Uh, so I'm not sure if Tom is online right now, so it's possible he sent me this challenge earlier uh, in the day, so I'll just also uh, start this one from, oh, no problem. I'll tell you what, I'll decline this challenge, and then if you want, you can send me another one. <laughs> uh, rejected. All right. Uh, in the meantime, I'm just going to do a game in the arena. Hopefully we'll get a chance to... Uh, play 
with this deck, this Avenging Angel deck, a little bit more because I'd really like to have one game with where we draw Avenging Angel. It always shines in this deck. All right. Uh, and the other thing I'm going to do here is uh, I've updated this uh, epic card game deck lists uh, spreadsheet. <laughs> Rejected. <laughs> exactly. So I'm just going to post this in the chat here and uh, you can go here if you want to look at any of these deck lists. You can copy them directly into uh, your app if you want to try out any of the decks that I've been playing on stream. Uh, they're all here with a little description. Fridays, how I play the arena day. Yeah. I mean, I like arena because uh, people aren't playing as casually. They're just trying to win. So I think those games are uh, the best ones for me to play because sometimes, you know, I jump in the quick queue and then I end up playing against someone that is just learning how to play for the first time. And uh, I just think that's a bad experience. Uh, oh, yeah, I thought the story of your life was a Friday should be how I play the arena, and I was, I was really trying to wrap my head around that one. Yeah, uh, Random 30 is a very different format. I will be the first one to say that uh, I definitely think I could improve in Random 30. The reason is I tend to play much more conservatively, and uh, I'm pretty sure that in Random 30 you should not play conservatively. You should play much more uh, aggressively. You should not Normally when I play, uh, uh, there will be a lot of turns where I just pass without spending my gold because uh, I don't want my opponent to play something that is going to punish what I play. Uh, yeah, so the problem is if I, uh, it in Constructed for example, if you spend your gold, your opponent is almost always going to have a way to spend their gold really effectively. Uh, it might be that they just draw two, but most of the time they'll play a big airborne champion or they'll play, uh, they'll surprise tech something out or they will remove your thing and get advantage with Drain Essence, Medusa, um, you know, like a zombie apocalypse or something like that. So the off turn value of gold is much higher and the off turn on turn value of gold is much higher. So, in general, the weaker plays, which I generally try to avoid in random 30, are better. And I also think that uh, just YOLOing it and slamming down a big blitz champion and attacking is also much better in random 30. Oh, right, random 60, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Zawelski. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the time, I mean, that I think that is uh, a lot of the reason why people like to play Dark Draft over random 30 is because... Uh, there's a lot of variance in how effectively you can punish people, which is what really makes that just random, those random uh, attacks that are really risky much better in random 30 than any other format. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was Zawelski or one other person that I play a lot of random 30 against. They just, uh, I'm, I don't think it's Zawelski for me, but uh, I know what you mean. There's one person that plays a lot of random 30 that I see all the time. A nemesis, yeah, <laughs> exactly. When I quick play and I queue up and I get, I get a uh, random 30 with this one person. I'm trying to think what the username is. I honestly, I can't remember usernames that well. All right. 
Well, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to start a quick match here and then uh, probably just make another deck in the meantime. Let's do let's shoot that one up. I'll talk a bit about, uh, let's see. Oh, we're in. <laughs> All right, is this random? This looks like constructed. All right, we're playing constructed. We're going first and uh, that means I probably want Shadow Imp uh, in my hand, if possible. This is a great card to start the game off because a lot of the time, Dark Draft, yeah. All right, I'll do another Dark, I'll do Dark Draft after this. A lot of the time, what I really like about Shadow Imp is that you can just play it and attack and then pass uh, if your opponent doesn't react. Um, all right, so it's my turn. I'm gonna hold on to a draw two. I'm actually going to keep only one of these draw twos. Uh, and Heron's the Meek is definitely better than Lessons Learned. And I don't want Guild Demon in this hand because I don't have a lot of action. So I'm just going to hold on to these other three, Mulligan the other two. Alright, I'm going to start off with a Shadow Imp attack. We'll see. Now a lot of the time, I think uh, this is difficult for uh, people to know, but uh, I, I think spending your gold to get rid of a Shadow Imp is perfectly reasonable. And that's because, especially at the start of a game, uh, this card can really just uh, make your life much more difficult than it needs to be. Because it will deal so much damage to you uh, the first time it comes out. This one, if this didn't, didn't uh, get broken here, I probably would take something like, I mean, I'd probably be dealing something like 10 damage at least with that with that one zero cost card. All right, we saw two Feeding Frenzies. The real question is, do I want a Shadow of Thought Flucker or Inheritance the Meek. It's probably going to be Inheritance the Meek to draw two. And then I'll pass. I don't want to uh, play this Thought Flucker because I really don't want to uh, get punished by Draka or Pyrosaur. Which decks that play Feeding Frenzy usually have both, or at least Draka. Yeah, he just backs away. Alright, this is the, uh, um, the Avenging Angel deck. So we're trying to draw Avenging Angel this game. That's our that's our plan. I want to I want to play Avenging Angel. All right, they're going to play something like uh, okay, yeah. So unfortunately, you don't get the ally ability off Fire Shaman when you use a draw two on a zero cost card like this because uh, you're not spending you're not playing a one cost card. And then uh, so here, uh, probably just going to play Thought Plucker. The only downside is this Fire Shaman is kind of annoying, but um, and there's nothing really good to erase here. So I'll surprise I got this Thought Plucker because I don't want to hold on to Surprise Attack if I don't have a lot of cards in my hand that uh, are meaningful. And normally I wouldn't Surprise Attack this out. Sorry, if I don't have any other champions, then I just play my Surprise Attack at the first chance. So that's not stuck in my hand. Uh, and no, I... I have three Avenging Angels. I have three Avenging Angels in this deck. And I, I think I've played three games with this deck and I haven't drawn an Avenging Angel uh, at all. So that's our, that's our goal. <laughs> all right, so uh, <laughs> very passionate about that. All right, uh, the reason that I surprise decked out this Thought Plucker is because my opponent's gold was down. So after this attack, they're just going to pass to me almost definitely. Um, so I might as well do it now. There's a couple of reasons. Uh, the main one is that if I found a Brave Squire off the top there, I would play this Muse and block a Strafing Dragon and then Brave Squire the Muse. The other reason is uh, if they don't get rid of my Thought Plucker, then my Muse is safe to play. So I am going to take four here. Going to be taking a lot. It's all right, though. I actually really enjoy playing a Wild Evil deck. I don't think I've made one of those on stream yet, but uh, they're very aggressive, <laughs> generally. All right, that's true, yeah. Okay, I did draw it. Although, I really like to have it drawn before lethal. All right. So here, I'm definitely gonna play this Force Mage Apprentice and just take out that, uh, that Fire Shaman. Now we know that there is two Feeding Frenzy, or sorry, I guess we only know there's one. We know there's one Feeding Frenzy in these three cards. And they just played Flame Spike. Uh, so that means it's actually not very likely they have a way to deal with the Thought Plucker. Oh, they didn't actually play the Thought Plucker, sorry. It was discarded to Thought Plucker. 
They have one Feeding Frenzy and two other cards. They definitely have some kind of answer to this because they discard a Flame Spike. So if I get Flash Fired here, I won't be very happy. But uh, I don't think they have Flash Fire because otherwise they definitely would have discarded Flash Fire there instead of discarding uh, Flame Spike since they thought their, that their uh, Fire Shaman would still be in play. Yeah, Force Mage is really good in this deck. Honestly, the main reason that I play Force Mage in uh, a lot of the decks that I like to build is I, I get very greedy. Uh, and I don't want to run my zero cost slot, slots as removal usually. Sometimes, if you're running a heavy evil deck or a heavy wild deck, there's some great zero cost removal, but in Sage for champions, um, it's pretty much just Force Mage Apprentice and Siren Song and Spike Trap. And uh, Force Mage Apprentice is so valuable because of just the way the types of decks that I put it in, these Sage heavy ones, don't have a good way to answer small champions that have a really powerful enter the battlefield effect because you can't just bounce them over and over again you don't want to transform them so my opponent spent their gold so they probably don't have an answer to this muse i'm going to attack with it it's a little risky but uh if they do then i'd be perfectly fine getting that out of their hand as well and then uh probably what i'm going to do is misguide herald here yeah because uh it'll block this strafing dragon so it effectively gave me 6 health. I'm going to attack with this Shadow Imp first. This one is uh, it's Butterfly Sting right now. But uh, basically that was just because it was originally called Avenging Angel. And I thought that name was kind of lame. <laughs> and uh, it basically just dances around the opponent without, uh, without really... Uh, you know, doing anything until, until one big turn here. So, because they only have three cards in hand, I think I'm going to pick the Nine of Shadows. It just makes it so that it's very awkward if they have a Loyalty 2 in hand. The Gungeon's not bad, um, but it's also somewhat weak because we just have so many champions with two health that our entire board would get swept if our opponent played a, uh, a Draka or um, Flash Fire, pretty much anything that just deals a small amount of damage to all of our champions. So... All right, then I am going to pass without using this Force Mage Apprentice because um, up the two damage from it I don't think will be very relevant, and I'd prefer to use it on Little Devil after attacks to make Flash Fire worse. Yeah, exactly. So I had to change the name from Avenging Angel to something else because I never drew the Avenging Angel, so it was kind of a misnomer. Alright, there's Brachiosaurus. Brachiosaurus is actually a very dangerous card against decks that play a lot of discard because it's basically a zero cost champion. And they're so low on cards that I would actually hold on to this Brachiosaurus and probably plan on discarding it to maximum hand size. Something that I see people do sometimes, um, and I don't recommend, is spending your gold before your opponent. So here, there's uh, it's so safe for me now to do whatever I want because, uh, oh, I shouldn't do that. I should, I should block first because of how difficult it is, uh, for them to interact now that they spent their gold. So in other words, basically I get to get in, um, I get to know and make greedy plays that I wouldn't normally be able to make. I'm going to final task this misguide herald here just to block that striping dragon. The other option I had was I could play to race uh, and use Force Mage Apprentice twice to get rid of that little devil, but uh, this play will probably either make them discard another card or refill my hand. All right, so we are going to go ahead and Temporal, Tem temporal Enforcer, and I'm going to go ahead and reveal Shadow Imp and probably Knight of Shadows uh, to give them back their Brachiosaurus. And then this Misguide Herald is going to block for us again. Yeah, I like Brachiosaurus Pass. Yeah, I mean, a big part, basically, in Epic, if you have, if you can attack first before you spend your gold, you almost always want to, because you want to get information. And even if uh, you don't have a good way to punish them spending their gold first, uh, 
and just, you know, playing a big blocker. Maybe you're thinking, oh, if I draw two first, maybe I'll get a card, a zero cost card that'll be relevant. The problem is that they can't always spend their gold first on your turn. So uh, if every single time you attack without spending your gold, they spend their gold immediately, then uh, you're gonna come out ahead more times than not. All right, we're gonna take four here. They're on some aggressive little double plan. It's interesting. I almost wouldn't be surprised if this deck was some kind of Army of the Apocalypse deck, maybe. I'm, I'm, maybe the little doubles are just supposed to be aggressive. This is the type of card that usually I like to just play, attack, and pass. And then I run a lot of Punishers alongside it because four damage every turn and it's difficult to block. Um, they're going to have to react at some point. So we get to draw here, two here from Muse. So we're already in a great spot. At this point, we just need to not die <laughs> randomly to damage, and then we probably win. So uh, because this board is so weak to a clear, I'm going to go ahead and just deal two damage to Little Double right away uh, before doing anything else. And then I, I'm going to attack with uh, Thought Plucker because I want to make that discard happen uh, and see what card I get in my hand immediately. So usually I attack, I make attacks that uh, will provoke my opponent first. So here, I'm just going to play Dracus Enforcer. Um, yeah, that is a very aggressive little double. I usually just like to hold on to this card for a while. Here, I almost definitely would have just discarded a little double instead of playing it, but maybe they're thinking, all right, the only way I'm going to win is if I just defeat them really fast. All right, I probably just should have attacked one at a time here. I accidentally group attacked. That's fine. It's hard to punish this because they're unblockable, but this is really bad against Spike Trap or, or uh, Hands from Below. There's really no reason for me to have group attack here. All right, and that's gonna be 15. So then they'll go to uh, seven. So let's see, one, two, we win. If this, if this uh, Shadow Imp connects, then we win. And then we can force Mage Apprentice and then play a Sage card to deal six. Yeah, and so that is, uh, you have to draw the, <laughs> I didn't even draw the angel. <laughs> the game's already over. All right, well, uh, we are going to prepare. We got a lot of triggers here. I'm gonna go ahead and, doesn't even really matter what we pick. Use both of these again to finish our opponent off. So because this champion has a lot of unblockable champions and ways to get around your opponent's blockers, a lot of the time, just the, if they're not, doing anything to your board. Uh, it doesn't take very many turns to win because your champions are just so, can get around your opponent's blocker so easily. All right, I'm gonna queue up for a Dark Draft here because it seemed like nobody was in the arena right now. Um, let me just go over this deck again and kind of explain what I was talking about. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly, this is why the deck can't be called Avenging Angel because apparently Avenging Angel is not in the deck. But uh, yeah, so basically what we're trying to do here is we have a lot of champions that can't be blocked uh, or uh, they can still deal damage or have some other kind of utility even if the opponent has uh, blockers in play. So things like Helion and Force Mage Apprentice can just hit the opponent We've got a couple of airborne champions like Ice Drake and Misguide Herald. Uh, and then we have mostly unblockable champions. So stuff like Tempor Temporal Enforcer will really, uh, I mean, you could think of this as something like a um, Savage Uprising where you're dealing, usually you're going to play this to deal six damage to them and bounce something. But uh, if they don't deal with it, then uh, it's just so much more powerful than that. And we actually have a lot of synergy with bouncing our own stuff. So sometimes we'll return, we'll block with a Muse and then return the Muse to our hand before damage, or um, we'll play Keeper of Secrets or Guilt Demon and attack or banish with those and then, and then return them to our hand. Um, that happens pretty reasonably, pretty often. And then uh, aside from that, 
we're just trying to kind of bait them into making a play before we do on on our turn so that we can punish them very hard so what we're trying to do is get them to spend their gold uh on our turn because we have all those unblockable champions attacking so they definitely don't want to get hit with those they you know spend their gold playing zombie apocalypse or uh maybe they play rain of fire or um, Dracus fire or something along those lines drain essence medusa and then we go ahead and play either uh, avenging angel is our prime punisher because even if they have champions in play then our avenging angel will gain us six so a big part of this deck is uh not dying <laughs> so that six health that you gain off the avenging angel is often just incredibly relevant at uh stabilizing which means that usually if you connect with avenging angel once then uh, you're in a very good spot it's very hard because your opponent has to remove the avenging angel on their turn and then if they want to attack and then they've spent their gold first uh and then you can you can follow up with something else but also because over the course of the game or occasionally removing cards from their hand a lot of the time they will discard their good answers to avenging angel because they are afraid they're going to be dead cards in the matchup. So uh, we also have Veldin here, which usually when we play Veldin, we're going to reveal something like four cards and just bounce their entire board to their hand. A lot of decks, uh, I don't see very many people... All right, we're just going to play an arena here. I don't see very many people playing Veldin because uh, I think that they want to play Time Walker and they just want to bounce their own zero cost champions. But what this deck does really well is, uh, because it just sits random one cost champions in play that just continually um, hit your opponent. Oh, oh, I see, I have to just cancel this, I guess. All right, uh, because they just have some, they, we just get champions in play that keep attacking, that sometimes both players will have champions in play and then your Veldin will just clear their board and then get it for 10. All right, I'm going to be playing some Dark Draft here. Uh, and hopefully we will get another game with this Constructed deck because I really want to <laughs> draw Avenging Angel. <laughs> All right, uh, here it's probably second wind for me. I think Vanishing is also, and Keeper of Secrets are also very strong first picks. Uh, first pack, first picks. I like second wind a lot because people tend to pick uh, people tend to draft aggressive decks, and so Second Wind is good against aggressive decks. Now, if people start to gravitate away from that, and they start playing uh, more controlling decks, like I usually don't build aggressive decks as much as other people do, then I think this card will fall off in terms of how powerful it is. Uh, Vanishing is extremely good in Dark Draft, even better than in Constructed, because returning an opponent's champion to their hand uh, usually means you get to waste their gold in this kind of a format. Um, and Keeper of Secrets is also very good. The problem is I don't want Vanishing early on. I want I want an aggressive deck. I don't just want to be playing Vanishing in uh, a really grindy deck where I'm just trying to get value. So because of that, I don't want to pick it early. Keeper of Secrets, I want to have a lot of Sage cards for that, but uh, it might be correct to take it over Second Wind first pick because it's nice to have at least one card in your deck the interacts with the discard pile. So I'm probably going to take both of these. I think Reaper is also reasonable. Uh, but uh, I really like having, you know, some amount of hard removal in your deck. Uh, and I, I'm perfectly fine picking up these draw twos. Reaper is not ideal if I don't have a lot of evil cards in my deck. And I don't think it's strong enough to pull me into that color. So I'm just going to pick up both of the draw twos here, which... Uh, and maybe I can get something going with a revolt synergy. So I like I might even just pick up this Angel of Mercy and kind of push myself into good here. I think I'm going to do that. I think in general the safest card in that pack was definitely Crystal Golem, uh, because you can very easily block a big champion and then break it to draw two. Um, in in uh, re in uh, Dark Draft, it, you very frequently this is going to be a draw two stop and attack, which is quite strong. Uh, and also very frequently you'll get to play it and then um, 
attack for seven and then break to draw two and spend your gold to do something else. So uh, it's much worse in constructed where um, you uh, it doesn't do as much as uh, sometimes you get spike draft or go clear the board. Uh, all right, so here I'm trying to figure out what to take. It's probably, so it's definitely playing Spike Kong or Zombie Apocalypse, one of those three. But just definitely the strongest cards in this pack. Um, probably gonna take Flame Spike because it's it's definitely debatable. Um, I like having, I don't have any ways to kill small champions right now. And uh, personally, I don't think that Kong is going to be too much of an issue against my deck uh, because I'm gonna be playing a lot of good cards and banishment effects, so I think I'll be able to take care of it. Uh, I think I would have a lot of trouble dealing with something like a Muse or a Thought Plucker, so I'm covering my bases. Probably going to take Feeding Frenzy, Smash and Burn here. Lesson Learned is also a valuable pick. Uh, I really like uh, Feeding Frenzy in general in uh, either decks that are have a lot of small damage effects or token-based decks, because uh, usually you can just your, your your human token will get blocked by something and then you can feeding frenzy it and then smash and burn is just a draw two plus so i think it's quite valuable in general here i'm probably going to take fires of rebellion angel of the gates also very reasonable in general i really like having removal that uh, does something extra so i think this card has a lot of value for me draw avenging angel <laughs> That should be the name of the deck. It should just be uh, No Avenging Angel. All right, here, uh, I think Fairy Trickster is not very good uh, most of the time. You would want a lot of zeros for this one to really be useful for you. I'm gonna take Avenger of Covenant and probably Parosir. I think I can really push the uh, human angle. And it's actually extremely likely, based on what cards I've passed, that our opponent is gonna be Heavy Wild. And when we pass Draka, the first pack, they probably took Draka. Um, they probably took uh, Pyrosaur, uh, sorry, Pyromancer, Rain of Fire in this pack. They probably took Kong in this pack. So our opponent's going to be heavily pushed into Wilds. And uh, it actually has a lot of usefulness. Uh, probably going to be Lightning Strike here. Actually, I mean, oh, Veldon's also a good pick, but I have, just have no Sage cards in my deck. I just have a Lion in Wait. Um, so yeah, this card is just going to be a way to cover our bases. Like I said, good tends to struggle with small champions more than every other alignment. So usually in a good deck, you want to have more cards that can deal with small threats than you normally would. All right, so here it's probably going to be um, Transform and maybe Shadow Imp. I mean, Reset's also reasonable. I might take the Reset. Oh, all right. I'm getting taking the Shadow Imp. <laughs> Yeah, really used Fairy Trickster. Yeah, I mean, the problem with Fairy Trickster is you kind of, both options, uh, it's much less clear which option to use than with most cards. I'm going to take Raxus Curse here. Uh, I think Silver Dragon's also a pretty good card, but uh, I really like, like I said, I'm, I'm covering my bases here. This card is also going to help me with zero cost champions like Little Double. In general, if I was to look at the number of cards in my deck that can deal with cards like Little Devil, it is uh, just Lightning Strike right now, efficiently. And then I can spend my gold for a couple of other plays. And so Rax's Curse is going to be my second card in that area. Here, honestly, I've actually picked up enough cards for Cave Troll. Well, I only have two one-cost ones. I'll take Word of Summoning, and I think I'm going to take Spore Beast, because I have a lot of cards in my deck which I can a lot of wild cards, it's very likely I'll be able to play Spore Beast with loyalty. And it's very good against wilds because they tend to pick up Rage and Lash very aggressively. And Spore Beast is probably the best answer against Rage and Lash. All right, so here I'm gonna take Brave Squire. I just think Brave Squire is just an extremely high value card that you can play in basically any deck. It uh, is going to stop a random Blitz Champion from hitting you. It'll help you trade up a lot of the time. Um, and also, it gives you a chump blocker even when you're buffing something else. All right, so here, I do not have many Sage cards. I should not have taken that Shadow Imp. Probably gonna be War Machine, Dark Knight. War Machine has the most utility of these three Sage options. I don't think I'm going to be able to loyalty to any of them, but uh, 
War Machine can banish all of your opponents as zero cost champions. So sometimes I'll choose to play this over my other one cost cards. Those other two, I don't think I'll ever play. I'll ever want to spend my gold to play one of those. So in general, while Bodyguard might be an okay card in my deck, it's probably useless for our opponent. So I'm definitely passing that. Uh, I think it is between Heinous Feast, Rax's Displeasure, and Sea Titan. Now Sea Titan is just in general a very good card. Uh, and I do not have any answers to it in my deck, which is a big problem. I mean, I guess I could just play a bigger thing. <laughs> All right, I'm taking Heinous Feast. Uh, I'm just going to assume that I'm going to get a board clear of some kind. Um, and I want to be able to banish your discard pile because I think that my deck might have trouble closing out games. All right, so from here, it's probably going to be Warrior Golem and Resurrection. Um, I think I like Resurrection better than uh, Chomp. I don't have loyalty for Time Walker. So Resurrection, especially with these unbanishable champions, will occasionally just uh, give me a lot of value as an off turn. And basically, like, if your opponent removes your Thunderous, then you can spend your gold to basically play it on their turn. That's great. That's a great play. All right. This one's a little awkward. It's probably going to have to be Muse because, like I said, I don't have very many good ways to answer it. So it's very likely that if our opponent plays Muse, then uh, it's just going to run away with the game. Uh, which is a little unfortunate because I pretty much want this entire pack um, minus Vital Mission. And they're probably going to take that Palace Guard. So they, they're going to have a high quality deck, in my opinion. They have Kong, Sea Titan, and Palace Guard all in the same deck. I think these are some of the best ways to recover when you're behind. So we're going to have to keep that in mind. In this pack, I'm taking White Knight. Uh, it just synergizes with my deck a lot. And then it'll probably be standalone. I don't really like Spawning Demon in this deck, I think. Or actually, I can take Dracos Enforcer. I have enough for loyalty, too. Spawning Demon, uh, I don't actually have any evil one cost cards. I have one, I think. So it's almost always just going to be a demon token for zero. But Dracos Enforcer here will almost, will very likely draw me a card based on the number of wild cards I have in my deck. And then, oh, what? I thought I picked them. <laughs> I, picked the, I got the two that I didn't want. Maybe I clicked wrong. All right, here uh, I need Inheritance the Meek. I think Citadel Scholar is the best card in this pack. I guess I hadn't clicked them. So I think Citadel Scholar is the best card in this pack. Uh... Just first pick, first pack. But Inheritance the Meek is very good because you can play it off turn and also uh, it synergizes really well with my unbanishable champions. All right, from here, let's see. It's probably Flashfire Spike Trap. Once again, just helping to deal with small champions. It's going to help a lot in that regard. I think Knight of Shadows is also very good. Uh, I don't have very many on turn plays, so I might need to pick up Knight of Shadows here. It's nice knowing that they won't have Spike Trap, but I still think I need both of these cards. We're just going to end up playing a very slow deck, so uh, <laughs> it's very possible that this game will go quite long because we don't have very many ways to finish it out, which is actually one of the reasons that I don't think Meta Shadows is as good in this deck as it would normally be. Overall, I think uh, my deck's okay. It's not, uh, there are a lot of times where I was drafting and there are multiple cards that I want in the same pack or I didn't really want anything. So I'd say that on average, this deck is a bit weaker than uh, the, my average deck that I draft. All right, so I'm going first. I'm probably just gonna slam down this Thunderous. I think uh, it might, we might be able to get something really good with it. And then I'll hold on to this Angel of Mercy and try to work those together. I'm gonna to toss this Boar Beast because I don't have loyalty too. And then uh, I guess I'll get rid of Feeding Frenzy since it's less useful than Lying in Wait uh, in my opening hand. All right, let's see if we can get there with Thunderous. Thunderous is, in my opinion, somewhat of a risky card. But there actually aren't a lot, isn't a lot of answers to Thunderous because of how big it is. But uh, when your opponent answers it, then it feels pretty bad because usually they answer it and get a lot. Like if they erased it here, that would that would be very bad for me. But uh, it's a very fast clock. This card will end the game on its own. They can't break. They can't banish it, and uh, it's very good with Angel of Mercy because we can return to play right away. So 
they spend their gold like playing a reaper here or something like that i'll just place angel of mercy all right perfect just don't play guilt demon or keep your secrets all right perfect well i mean they might they might still have it hopefully they can't banish my discard pile <laughs> it's a risky run with angel of mercy it's very weak to discard pile of disruption all right that's a lot of value right there so we are off turn play it was a thunderous and an angel of mercy all right, so here uh, I'm probably actually going to attack with this Angel of Mercy. There's very few cards they could play that would punish me for it. I guess, what would really do it? Hmm, because we have, we have Fires of Rebellion plus Flame, plus uh, Lightning Strike if necessary. But I'm not sure that I would want to invest that in something like an Ice Drake or a um, the 5-9. I forget the name of the 5-9. Hmm. And they could draw two here. Kind of just want to pass. I think I'm just going to pass. The reason that I like passing here is, uh, I mean, they have to basically clear again on their turn. And I don't have a very good play on turn play to make anyway. I think uh, it's debatable whether or not I should just... Oh, okay. But they can't use it on the Thunderous. Because <laughs> I would just gain 10. It's unmanageable. All right. All right. So I'm going to draw to probably with uh, lying in wait here. The standalone is normally not very good. But because we have such a big champion in play... Uh, then uh, I think it's much better than it normally would be. And in addition, I'm going to play as Dark Knight and, and attack with it. This is because if my opponent had something that cleared the entire board, a break all or banish, I mean, banish, not banish all, but if they had a break all uh, effect in their hand right now, they would not have played that vital mission. They would just start their turn, and then when their turn started, they would uh, play the break all. So here, I'm assuming that this vital mission play is a tell that they don't have a uh, break all. I'm guessing they're going to play some, they're going to do some kind of play here, which removes this Thunderous, uh, because that they need to remove both, so they might as well. Uh, if they're going to break Thunderous, then it makes sense for them to have vital mission to on my turn, to banish the Angel of Mercy, because if they start their turn and then break Thunderous, then uh, when my turn starts, I just get it back right away. No, another interaction which is kind of cute is that uh, Thunderous gives all the dragons plus five offense and plus five defense. We do have one other dragon in our deck here. Uh, oh wait, no, we didn't. That was the card that I got. I, I didn't pick correctly. All right, they're gonna play Den Mother here. That is no big deal. Standalone is gonna be very nice in that regard because uh, we only have one champion to play. But I'm not going to do that yet. I'm probably going to draw two here, and then uh, I can play a standalone when I attack. Uh, let's see how I want to do that. Probably going to be using the resurrection. Draw two. I mean, I think it would be very good to resurrect this, but uh, also, I think the standalone is so valuable in the sand, and the lightning strike is in general going to be more value than the resurrection. Exactly. <laughs> no, standalone, each player chooses one champion and then you break the rest. <laughs> All right, so right now, if this Sundaris connects, it deals 10 and they're at 14. So five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, well, I'm just going to attack with it. Hmm, I am trying to think because if I do Shadow Imp, Brave Squire, standalone, uh, well, thing is, I really need this to hit, but they could just have an airborne champion that they're, that they're playing to chump with, so I'm just going to make this attack first. I think if they had a way to remove it, they would have just done that on their turn. Alright, they're just going to take it, so that's that's good to see. Uh, it's probably going to be draw two here. Let's see, seven... I'm just trying to think if I can achieve lethal. It might be possible. Shadow Imp attacks for two. 
So x for two more, and then five would be nine, and then uh, they'd be at five. Right, shadow imp, brave square to bring them to seven. All right, well, let's go for it. So if this hits, we just win with fighters of rebellion. Took it like a champ. Yeah, exactly. This is the real power of Thunderous, is that if you just get hit by this thing, <laughs> tens a lot of damage to take. And uh, surprisingly, just like in Random 30, I would say the strongest format for Thunderous is Random 30. But a lot of the time, people just like to mulligan away their answers to things like Thunderous. All right, so we win. And uh, yeah, uh, I didn't think the stack was going to be able to close quickly, but Thunderous is one of our only threats, so we managed to just stick it. And uh, that is what happens when Thunderous doesn't get blocked or removed. It usually does get blocked or removed. Okay. So yeah, um, what time is it? I'm probably going to try and, you know, I really would like to, uh, <laughs> I'd really like to um, play with this constructed again. And I just want to play one round with the Avenging Angel. I know that it is, it is dark draft time, but I'll play some more dark draft on Monday. I just want to see this deck get to play Avenging Angel, that's all. <laughs> it's all that I want. <laughs> once this once this uh deck once this deck gets Avenging Angel out, then it'll be shelved. Probably for a while. Make another deck. I think it would be fun to make a deck that was uh, wild and evil. Um, I think it would also be fun to uh, show what a Army of the Apocalypse deck looks like or what a Drinker of Blood combo deck looks like. And I think it would also be fun to do something like a, a Sage good tempo deck, but not one that, uh, not a weird one that tries to use Silver Dragon or something like that, but just, just your normal Tempo death, sage, and good. Yeah, army sweet. You got your own agenda. <laughs> it's true. You know, the, thing, the cool thing about army apocalypse. I can talk about it a little bit. You know, the queue here. All right, so the cool thing about army apocalypse. Let's pull it up. So basically, this card, when you play it, each player returns all their champions in their discard piles to play. So you get all of your, your champions back. Your opponent gets all of their champions back. So the synergy with Army of the Apocalypse is that you really want to play it with cards that uh, it's going to call this um, Undead Army. You really want to play it with cards that get you value right away. Gotta save it. Oh, I guess it's all the way in the back now. All right. Uh, you really want to play it with cards that are going to do something like, we're gonna play this Crystal Golem, for example. The reason for that is you get to break to draw two cards. So whenever this is in your discard pile, every Army of the Apocalypse also draws two cards because you return to play and then you break to draw two cards. But you also get all of your other champions. So that's gonna be a big part of the deck. Get the Angel Unshelter, exactly. <laughs> We could put her. In, we could put her in this deck. Honestly, it's very good in Army of the Apocalypse shells. Uh, but uh, just this one deck that I'm playing, I feel like it's just probably the meanest deck that I've played thus far. So, but I just have to play this Avenging Angel once. Uh, yeah. But anyway, Army of the Apocalypse. The other thing that uh, is really common in Army of the Apocalypse decks are Blitz champions. The reason is you get to attack right away. So if you play any Blitz champion, well, the tributes and loyalties don't activate when you're armed with the Apocalypse. So if you bring back a Dark Assassin, you don't get to use it right away because uh, it won't have Blitz. But if you bring back uh, a Noble Martyr or a Lord of the Arena, it can attack right away. So usually what you want are something like evasive champions, 
uh, that are really going to eventually, they're, they're really going to uh, just attack and not get blocked. And also evasive blitz champions. And also just champions that do something immediately. So crystal golem counts. War golem kind of counts because when it gets broken, you get to recycle. Uh, so even if you army the apocalypse into play, then you get to recycle when it leaves play. Same thing for cards like Guild Demon and Keeper of Secrets that banish right away. Same thing with Force Mage Apprentice. All right, so we're going first. I really don't like Veldens in my opening hand because I don't usually want to play them. So I'm actually just going to toss everything but Lessons Learned just so I have a draw to. Now this hand is also, I don't have any good plays to make, so I'm just passing. I mean, I'll come back to it. I was just talking. I was just <laughs> talking about the Army of the Apocalypse, but I feel like if I'm in the queue, I might as well. Uh, all right. We're gonna play Fire Shaman. Probably going to play something like a T Rex here. Two Fire Shamans. Okay. Archeleon is going to get a lot of value, and a Pyromancer. All right. So they are on some kind of just burn. Just kill me with direct damage strategy. So it's relevant to know what your opponent is trying to do. Interesting. Because uh, that way you know what they're weak against. So here, um, they don't really have a lot of cards just in general. So that's probably going to be one of their bigger weaknesses in this uh, in this deck. So uh, Helion is going to be quite good because we can remove multiple Fire Shamans with it. Uh, but I think I actually want to play Thought Plucker because I want to whittle their hand down to zero just right now. So I'm, I'm going to take two here because uh, if they have another zero cost champion, I want them to play it. I don't know what zero cost champion I'd play here, but they seem to be playing very aggressively. And I'll play the Helion on my turn to take out those two Fire Shamans. I just have to draw a Sage card in the next two. Alright, so now we're going to start our turn. What's nice here is that uh, we, yeah, we're going to use this gain control of Helion, give it blitz, that way we can take out both of these fire shamans, and then we'll attack with Thought Plucker right away. It's unblockable, so we might as well. We don't want to pass because... Uh, then they would just start their turn probably. But in this scenario, they're probably going, going to be forced to use Pyromancer to deal four damage to Thought Plucker. Um, so the reason I played Thought Plucker first was so that I could attack with it and force them to act. This Helion, the four damage that we could be dealing to them is not as relevant as uh, basically locking in their gold on our turn. All right, and then from then from here, I'm probably going to be playing Drain Essence on that, py, on that Pyromancer on... Uh, on their turn. I'm just gonna pass because if I drain essence that and they play a Draka or some other kind of Blitz champion, I mean, I guess they won't have loyalty too, but if they play a Blitz champion, like a Juggernaut maybe, I wanna be able to block it. Yeah, exactly. So what I would do in general, uh, so when, you, when it comes to zero cost Blitz champions, you don't ever wanna spend your gold and then play them, it's always you either, and when your opponent has their gold up, you always either play them and then attack with them and then spend your gold, or you spend your gold and then you pass, and then if your opponent spends their gold, you play your zero cost champion and attack. Uh, all right, so we're just gonna take this two here. I like this attack that they're making. I'm not really sure which one would be better to attack with first. It all depends around what you're playing with, what you're trying to play around. I think that playing this blue dragon here is wrong. I would 100% attack Pyromancer first because now if I have a really greedy play to make, I can just make it with no repercussions. So when I say greedy play, for example, I could final task this Thought Plucker to chump their Pyromancer or something like that. I mean, I'm not going to do that, but I could. Uh, all right, so yeah, I'm gonna drain us to that. Uh, I mean, I guess I don't have to worry about it. 
I'll let I'll wait for it atta to attack. Yeah. Well, for example, in this situation, I would uh, blue dragon to deal the two and return this to hand, and then um, I'd attack with Pyromancer. I wouldn't be playing the Shadow and attacking with it. And uh, even though he's aching for cards, or Crypt's aching for cards, uh, there's the fact that they attack with Shadow Imp first means I get priority anyway, so might as well just also attack with this Pyromancer. I guess they're really worried about losing it to an unfavorable block on an Ambush Champion. All right, we're gonna take that down for free. Basically go up to 15 here. That'll put us out of out of effective kill range for a lot of things. I've got a couple of options. Uh, I'm probably just gonna lessons learn my drain essence to replay it. It's a bit weak in the sense that I don't have much to do on their turn. But uh, that takes out this blue dragon and probably saves me two health, and then I can just pass. Uh, with my other gold up on their turn. So I think I'm going to do that right away just so I don't take two damage from this blue dragon. And I don't think attacking here is very important. So this game is mostly going to be about uh, not dying. <laughs> Everything else is m marginal. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh... Yeah, I mean, the other option is I could misguide Herald here. Let's see, what, what would be really relevant to find? Avenging Angel. What if we found Avenging Angel off the top? Or, uh, or Helion would also be very good. We just clear the board. So I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna Misguide Heralds, and we found nothing. All right, I'm gonna take this skill team in. I'm gonna leave the Pyromancer because I want, uh, I want to uh, basically, uh, maybe final task this. And if they eat this skill demon for free, if they do some kind of play that doesn't involve blocking this and then passing or taking three, then uh, I'm also fine with that. All right, so here's where I pass. <laughs> I know. It's true. I do get a little blown out by something like an amnesia here or a heinous feast because I am really relying on the fact that I'm going to be able to Lessons Learn this Drain Essence. I could also lose to just some random burn here. All right, that is totally fine. Um, I could get in for eight. I want to hold this up so I can deal to damage to two champions. Like I said, this game is just going to be about me not dying and the game going on for a few more turns and then I'll win. It's not really about uh, me trying to race them. This isn't really a race anymore. It's more about uh, in the long game, I have the advantage because they're playing, they're spending their gold to do things like just play a Strafing Dragon. So we are going to be taking two from that. There's nothing we can really do there. So that's fine. Yeah, yeah, 13. I'm not going to die to 13. It's possible here I should just be, all right, I should just drain Essence right away. But, uh, yeah, I mean, usually I just like to wait for as much information to pass by as possible. Plus, the first thing that attacks here, I'll block with Misguide. The second one is the one that I'll uh, use the Drain Essence on. Just because, again, I'm, I'm not really trying to make this game go... I'm not trying to get a ton of advantage out of every turn. I have a ton of advantage. What I'm trying to do is just make it so that I don't randomly die here. All right. Yep. Block this with Misguide Herald. I did consider just, maybe I just should have drained Essence right away. I think that was a mistake. Because it's very, if they have a Banish, if they have an, uh, they had a draw to and an Amnesia, they'd probably do both right now. A Guilt Demon did come in handy here because they're playing Citadel Raven and they don't have any event to get back with it. <laughs> the Elusive Angel. It's so elusive. 
All right. So this is a, an, a perfect example of a situation where I think uh, not playing the drain essence, sorry, not, not the drain essence, not playing the, uh, spending their gold first really puts them at a disadvantage. Because originally I was just going to drain essence, but now I can final task my misguide herald pretty much for free because it's going to get to block one of those two attacks. And uh, if I find basically anything, I'm in a really good position. And I did. So I'm going to go ahead and Velvet and reveal both of these to return uh, both of these to the, back to their hand. And then uh, I'll take the two. So because they played that Citadel Raven there, if I had attacked with the uh, with the Blue Dragon, I would have been forced to drain Essence. Because they spent their gold first, I was free to uh, know I wasn't going to die if I uh, they weren't going to play another Blitz Champion. So I could uh, basically make what I call a greedy play, which is I final task this Misguide Herald out, I can block the Blue Dragon, but uh, it's greedy because if my opponent had a big Blitz Airborne or a base of Blitz Champion, or if they played something like uh, Smash and Burn or something like that, then I would be in trouble. So I'm definitely gonna make sure I use this two damage here. I'm gonna do it that way in case they wanted to play Flashfire this turn. They can't. And then uh, when my turn starts, I can banish the last card in the discard pile. Yeah. All right, so I'm gonna get it with this. Get rid of that. Uh, now, they can't. They definitely can't kill us with this attack because they have, I guess, okay, it would be very complicated for them to kill us at this at this point, just randomly. Um, I am going to start getting in here. I might just be able to win this turn instead of, <laughs> instead of ever replaying that Drain Essence. Let's see, right now I'm dealing 18, that puts them at four. Yeah, it's not inconceivable that I win here. I think it's still safest. Oh, yeah, but then if I lesson learn that, then I can't... Uh, I won't have a play to make on... Hmm. <laughs> then I won't have anything to spend my gold on on their turn. Which is not great. I hit them for 8, though. Hmm. Could win with Avenging Angel. I don't really want to make them discard a card because they should just discard Citadel Raven. They have a, basically a dead card in their hand right now. The real question is whether I am willing to... Uh... All right, you know what I think the play is here is I'll attack with this and then they'll be up four and then uh, I will pass. They can't flame spike. Oh, I see what you're saying. That's true. They could do that. It's so rare though because they've already played one flame spike, and they just have to. They'd have to top deck flame strike or um, what's it called off the top here. I mean, it's it seems like they don't have an off turn play, so maybe I should just punish them for that. Uh, but the problem is. It's not really worth spending my gold now if I'm not going to be able to spend my gold on my opponent's turn. So I am going to pass here. Well, they could just they could just rip a flame strike off the top or something. But I am going to spend my gold immediately as soon as they attack. All right, now I'm going to do it. Drain essence that, lettering me up to a lot, 18, and I'll take two and go to 16. Now I'm pretty much safe from everything because I have Guilt Demon here, so I can't die. I mean, it's technically possible I could die, but it would be very convoluted. Brave Squire would probably do it, right? Because uh, they have Citadel Raven in hand, so... Sorry, not Brave Squire, Rage. Because I can block with Guilt Demon. So if they uh, Rage this right now, and then they Citadel, Citadel Raven attacked Raged. Maybe if they had Rage in hand, they might be able to do it. All right, and then that's the game. We didn't, we still didn't, we didn't draw our, didn't draw our Avenging Angel, even though I think I saw 15 cards that game. 
uh, well, I guess I'm going to be calling it then here. And uh, this deck, one of these days. <laughs> I'll get that Avenging Angel. <laughs> Have a good evening. Have a good weekend. Happy Friday, everyone. I'll see you back again on Monday. Good games. Yeah, Elusive Angel. We should just rechange that. Let me change that name real, real quick before before I head off. All right, uh, where is it? All right, I can fit it all in there. Wonderful. All right, uh, I'm heading off. Good night, everyone.